Hey all you cool cats and kittens, this is Zeke from Replicate, and I want to talk to you a little bit about webhooks today and how to use them with Replicate API. So I just asked ChatGPT what webhooks are. They are automated messages sent from apps where an event occurs and they enable real-time communication between apps. So what does that mean? Um, in the context of Replicate, it means whenever you create a prediction by running a model, you can get a notification as an HTTP post request to a server that you control whenever the prediction is created or when it's updated or when it's finished. So this is useful in cases where you want to um, do something with the data from a prediction like store it in the database when it's completed or if you're running like a long running task like a, um, a you're using the new training API and you want to receive a notification when the training is complete. So we have a new guide. It'll soon be published on replicate.com. It's currently just on my machine, but I thought it would be useful to take our existing getting started with Next.js application and update it to work with webhooks. So this is a public repo. It's at getting started Next.js in the Replicate organization. I've got it locally on my machine here. Um, and let's, let's just look at what it does um, out of the box. So assuming you've set your Replicate API token in your environment, you can open up localhost 3000 and you can run stable diffusion. So this will just generate a simple image. So what if we wanted to take this application and make it so that every time we got an image back on this page, we also wanted to save it to the database or we wanted to download the uh, resulting file and save it to S3 or Google Cloud Storage or something like that. Um, so let's look a little bit at how the, the app works now. So it has a front end component, a React component, where that handles the, the form of submission. So when you're on this page and you hit go, um, there's a handler that calls um, an internal API that's part of the Next.js app which talks to the Replicate API to create a prediction. And then the application has a while loop that uh, is effectively for polling. So every one second, it's checking the status of the prediction by hitting another internal API, which is that API slash predictions and the ID of the prediction. So this is a perfectly reasonable way to create predictions with Replicate and check on their status using polling. Um, an alternative to, do th to this or a complement to this is to use webhooks to um, have your system be notified by HTTP when the prediction is complete. So let's look a little bit at the back end for this. So there are two API routes being called. There's API predictions and API prediction ID. So those are in the API predictions directory of the Next.js app. <clears throat> so it's pretty simple. It uses the uh, Replicate NPM client to create a prediction. And then the other endpoint is just using the client to get the prediction and check the status. So what we want to do to support webhooks is we want to actually add um, a webhook URL when we create the prediction. So we'll just take, um, you would think that you would want to point it at, at localhost so you could test it out. But this actually isn't going to work because if we send an API request to replicate and replicate wants to respond, it's not able to reach our machine at localhost 3000 because it's not accessible to public internet. So what we need to do is open up another terminal window here and we want to set up something called a reverse proxy which is uh, a way of mapping an external url or iop address to a local secure tunnel to your machine on a specific port so there's a great tool for this called ngrok and you can run it through node.js's npx command so we can do npx ngrok http 3000 and the color is a little difficult to read but now we basically have this 
HTTPS URL, temporary URL, that points to our application. So when we go to this, we see our website. And we can actually use any anything on the public internet can actually access this URL. So this is a great way for us to be able to test web hooks. So I'm going to take that URL and I'm going to use it here in my as my webhook URL. And then we want to create this replicate webhook handler. So we'll add a new file in the API directory called replicate webhook.js. And it's going to be really simple. So let's borrow from an existing file here so we can get the, the syntax right. And what do we want to do with this function? We want to console.log. Hey, I'm a webhook. Thanks, Copilot, for suggesting the exclamation point. Let's do some emoji, too. OK. And then we will console.log the request body. And we will return, I forget exactly what we did. And we'll return the stringified request body. OK, so now if we actually just in our browser, go to localhost 3000, API, replicate webhook. We should see, okay, we see the JSON representation of an empty string. And if we look in the logs in the node process, where we're running the server, yeah, see, I'm a webhook and request that body is empty. So that shows us that this URL is working. And actually, we can take the ngrok host, and we'll see the same thing. So now we know that that URL is working as well. So let's go back to our code where we're creating a prediction. And sure enough, there's our URL. So now what we would expect is that the next time we go to our website and create a prediction, it doesn't really matter whether it's running on localhost or at this ngrok URL, what we expect to happen is that we fill out a prompt, we hit go, and then in addition to doing the polling that it's doing already, it's also going to console.log the output of the webhook. Hey, and it worked. So here we go. We got the response message, and then this is the request body. And so this body represents the prediction object that is returned by the replicate API. So if you went to um, get a prediction using the API, this is the same shape of response that you get back from the webhook. So what you end up, what you do with this webhook is up to you. You could say, uh, you could have something here that says, um, you know, save prediction to database. And this could be an external data store, and you are passing it the request body of the, the webhook. Um, you could generate um, a notification. So uh, send update, send message to Slack channel. Just kind of making this up. Hey, this prediction is done. And then that would be something like request.body.id. So these are kind of contrived examples, but you get the idea. This is where you can respond to um, an event. So something to know here when you're creating these is that you can also, so webhooks will be sent whenever a, um, sorry, whenever a uh, prediction is created or when it has new logs or when it has new output or when it's finished. So you can actually use a, thing, a property called webhook events filter to say, um, I only want a notification when the prediction is completed, not every time anything happens to it. I, don't, I only care about the completion. So this is an optional property, but it gives you some control over 
which webhooks you see receive per prediction. So I think that's maybe all you need to know about how to handle webhooks. Let's take a look at this guide quickly. So um, we covered polling. Um, polling is a way of just repeatedly hitting the replicate API every few uh, seconds or so to check the status of a prediction, and that's a perfectly good way to do it. Um, we have some documentation on how to set up a webhook when creating a prediction. Also, when you are using the new training API, which is in private beta right now, um, we also support webhooks for, for that as well. So when you create a training, you can actually set a webhook URL the same way you do for creating a prediction. Um, and that's, that's especially useful because trainings can often take several minutes to run. So you don't usually want to just sit there waiting and watching. You want to um, fire and forget and then use some other system to receive the notification and, and handle um, the results of the new training process. Um, we covered how to use a reverse proxy to test your code locally before you deploy it. One thing to note is that if you need some uh, custom, ident unique identifying data when you're sending a webhook, you can always just add a query for it. So um, my ID equals one, two, three. So, um, this is kind of arbitrary. It's up to you how you want to structure this, but this is a useful way to tell Replicate to call a URL and then to be able to receive that 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 um, query param in your webhook handler and use it to perhaps identify a record in your database that you have previously created. So um, something to keep in mind there. Another thing is you may receive multiple webhook events for the same um, for the same specific event. You may receive the same event multiple times. And this is something that happens where sometimes your server doesn't necessarily respond with the right um, code or some requests get dropped. So uh, something to keep in mind is that when you write your, your webhook handler, you wanna make sure that you are uh, checking in your database first or checking your local file storage first to make sure that you haven't already saved this to your database. And if you are, then maybe you should update it. Um, so long story short, make sure your handler is item potent. Um, this webhooks are supported out of the box in the Python client and the JavaScript client. Um, and if you want a, to see a real working example of this in the wild, um, you can check out the Scribble Diffusion code base, which is an open source repository and it has a pull request that shows um, a real life example of how to use webhooks and also um, some of the things you need to know when you're running uh, one of these applications on Vercel. So um, this is some Vercel specific code that will um, make sure that the host name that's being used for your webhook is um, works the same way, whether you're in development or whether you're looking at a review app um, or whether you're in production. So that's pretty handy. Um, this PR also has some uh, code that illustrates how to save predictions to a Postgres database using Prisma.js as well. So um, this could be a useful starting point if you um, want to start stuffing your prediction data into a database when it's complete. So hopefully that's helpful and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.